my sister-in-law kept telling me, well, now that you're, you're religious, quote, religious, <laughs> you're never going to find a, a woman now, right? I mean, you had a hard enough time on the road, you know, having girlfriends and all that stuff, but now it's going to be really tough. Well, it was but a week later that I went to this uh, Presbyterian church in, in Cambridge because a friend of mine had invited me down. It was, uh, he kind of tricked me in a little bit of a way, right, to come down because he lent me some, uh, some tapes of Keith Green and, and I decided, okay, when can I give these back to you? He says, oh, come on down to church. So Sunday morning. Sunday morning, <laughs> yeah. So I came down and, uh, and there was actually, um, my wife was singing in this little singing group called Joyful Noise. And uh, so they invited me to come down and and play and I was always anything music I was interested in and I saw her there and she caught my eye and I went hmm you know she's she's kind of cute you know so I asked my <laughs> friend if she if she was available and he says yeah I think so so anyway to make a long story short you know she invited me to help her move and next thing you know we you know we started going out uh, to the coffee shops and on dates and stuff like that and uh, within about nine or ten, ten months we were married so we have a picture of the couple there here we go. is Bob with Donna. That's right. His beautiful wife is here in the wings today. <laughs> you have one son. We have one son, Dan. Dan. Yeah. How many years married? Uh, we've been married for 28 years. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's just about the length of time you've known Jesus. Yes. You didn't have to wait very long. No, I did not. In fact, I, I, I met Jesus in, uh, I believe it was in November of 82 and September of 83 we were married. So. Okay, what did your friend have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they were quite anyone. surprised, yeah. Does God have I, a plan or not? Exactly, exactly. And it's intriguing to read that, because uh, I think, well, I know I felt this way 30 years ago. Well, no more parties. I thought I was going to have to fit into a mold that really wasn't me. <laughs> you actually lost interest in the party life. That's right. And had a tremendous hunger which I also had, and my husband did, and so many others, to get into God's Word. That's right. I mean, yeah. for some that'll sound like you've got to be kidding. God <laughs> yeah. must have problems. Yeah. But it really is a delicious, living, and active book. God it speaks is. through His Word. And you know what the cool thing was? I decided to start at the back of the book. I, I started with Revelations. Oh boy. Which, uh, you know, but I had Hal Lindsey's um, book. The Late Great Planet Earth. Yeah, and, and I follow along with that. And, and it was like an eye opener. And because I was kind of a radical guy, you know, doing a whole rock and roll musician th scene, you know, I mean, like reading Revelations was really cool, right? I mean, there's some really wild it stuff. It is the revelation of it, Jesus Christ. It is, it is. And, and it really got me excited. And from there, it got me excited to read the rest of the word, <laughs> you know, so, so it was really good. I mean, uh, and I mean, God just kept, you know, showing himself, you know, in different areas of my life over and over and over again. I had, uh, I don't know how much time we have, but I, I had a, an opportunity after uh, to, to get a new apartment. And uh, at the time, I wasn't working because I'd come off the road and, uh, and I had a hard time getting a job because I was touring with a rock band before and I was on welfare for a little bit. You know, the only time in my life, but it, it helped, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had to f try to find an apartment. So I started phoning up a few places and the first place I called up, you know, the guy said, where do you work? I said, I, I don't, I'm on welfare. Click, hangs on the phone. I go, okay, here we go, right? So I phoned the second guy up, and he didn't ask me where I worked. So I thought, well, this is great, right? You know, I don't have to worry about that. So uh, he told me to come down. So I thought, okay. I hope this guy isn't one of these, you know, short-haired suit guys, right? You know, because I mean, I, my hair was a lot longer back then, and I, you know, jean jackets and the whole nine yards. I, look, I still looked like a rocker, even though I was a Christian. And uh, so, anyways, I knock on the door, and sure enough, this guy in a suit and tie opens <laughs> the door. He looks at me, and I look at him, and he goes, "Well, listen, uh, we don't want anybody here who's going to have wild parties." I said, "I won't have wild parties. I'm a born-again Christian." And he goes, "Really? So am I." <laughs> and we ended up talking in, 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 up in the room for, for a long period of time just about the Lord. We, we didn't even talk about the apartment. It got dark. Finally, I said, well, I guess I should go home. He says, oh, you want keys here? You can have them now. He didn't even ask me for a no, down wonderful. payment, nothing. He, and he says, and if you need to fix it up, you know, like just tell me how much the paint costs, you know, and all that stuff. It was great, you know. And then I had uh, Donna help me paint the place. And I mean, God just was so, I mean, amazing, you know, like, uh, and he still is, you know. But I mean, it, like when at the beginning of my Christian walk, he just kept showing up all the time. And it was just awesome. I get a sense that God was pretty eager to show you that that question you were asking, is the joy in that guy on that TV real? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you found? Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, 
I went, okay, yeah, now I know. I, I, I know David wasn't putting it on. <laughs> you know, I mean, From a rebel rocker to yeah. a man who uses his gifts and talents. That's right. And that's what I'm doing now still, you know. For the one who is the rock. That's right. We've got I, a picture of your new band. That's right. This, this is a band uh, called 11th Hour. It's a, it's a worship band that, uh, that we... Uh, Put together a few years back out of the uh, Cambridge Vineyards uh, Church. Did you and, give it that name, Bob? Uh, it came out of a out of a situation where we were praying for something, and it came at the very eleventh hour. And mm -hmm. Donna and I thought this would be a very good name for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's never too late, but sometimes no, he makes you wait till I, the last minute. Absolutely. And, and I'm also I also play with uh, Catherine Marquis, um, uh, who's you know, been here. Who's been here? Uh, On when she was Street? here just uh, about a month or so ago, I guess. And and we uh, we actually recorded a live CD down in London uh, a couple of weeks back, which is going to be released in the uh, fall. So uh, we're really excited about that. You know, I mean, uh, it's just been like doing a live CD is just so exciting because you've got the entire you know like uh, con you know crowd out there. You know, and they're all worshiping, and it's just like that. The spirit is there. You can just feel it, right? So uh, that you know. God kind of connected me with her a few years back, and it's been really exciting. So, I mean, so many opportunities that, uh, of, of ministry that we have. I also have a, uh, we have a, a group called The Gathering that meets uh, once a week in, in a home. It's, it's, it's like a little uh, home church, and, uh, and I, I lead worship for that, just my, with my acoustic guitar, and we have a djembe player and a bass player, and, and uh, boy, the spirit just moves mightily in that place, you know, so it's really exciting what God's been doing, you know, so. Sounds like you haven't left anything that you're missing. No. No. Your life sounds so fulfilling and alive. And I'm still doing music. I, I teach guitar for, for a living now. So I am the full-time musician that people told me I could never be, you know, and, and uh, so. <laughs> Got the woman they said you'd never find. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I'm sure, Bob, that we have, we have people who just cruise by. They say, well, I don't watch the program, but I just happen to catch it. And yeah. there are going to be some right now who would not even choose to watch Christian TV. Yeah. But they relate to you because yeah. they've been there. Maybe they're old 70s rockers, too. Well, there's lots out there. <laughs> but they're still stuck in mm -hmm. a life that is joyless, yeah. purposeless. Mm -hmm. um, so many things can trap us, imprison us. I, I didn't ask you this ahead of time, but would you be comfortable to just lead in a, the kind of simple prayer that you prayed with David Maines that might be that turning point for some guy or a gal watching right now? Sure, sure, I can do that. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that I just want to say I need you, Lord. If this is you who out there I just pray for those people out there right now who are, who are searching, who are searching for something and, and they're not getting it. They're not getting it through the things of the world. They're not getting it through relationships. They're not getting it through, through material things. I pray for, for those right now in the name of Jesus. And if, and if you're one of those people, whether you're a rocker or, or, or a housewife or whatever you are, if, if you need something more in life than what you're getting right now, I just want to ask you to pray with me right now. Dear Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I confess that I have not followed you my life, in, during my life. And I ask you into my heart right now. I ask you into my heart right now in Jesus' precious holy name. And I pray that you would take care of every part of my life for as long as I live down here. And I I just surrender it all to you right now in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. We both know it's that simple. And uh, life is waiting for you. The author of life planned for you before you were born. He says he wrote down every one of your days. Isn't that a wonderful thought? It's awesome. And when mm -hmm. you discover it day by day, you begin to live it. It's a wondrous thing. We would love to encourage you if you just prayed with Bob. Would you call the prayer line that you see on the screen and uh, we'll send you a Bible, uh, some material to help you get started in your new life. And uh, we just want to celebrate with you because guess what? We know who is celebrating, all the angels of heaven, if that was your prayer today. Bob, thank you. Thank you for well, coming you. and sharing your amazing story. God wants to do it again and again. We both know that. That's right. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.